because we all need power, just like we all need attention, mm -hmm. right? It's not unique to, it's not like we have power children or or attention children, but some of us are more inclined to need more attention and less power or vice versa, right? And for those kids that are more in that power seat role, especially if we are power people, can really lead to conflict. It's a human need, just like love. We need love and we need to be heard and we need to be understood. And that's what he's really, I think, asking for here. Welcome to Imperfect Mommy. Our children are constantly looking to us for examples. The term role model doesn't quite cut it here. We are shaping their worldview with every move we make. You see, it's not in the lectures we give or moments where we are actively attempting to teach them. It's in the micro movements we make, the unconscious ways in which we navigate life. We are constantly teaching our children how to show up for themselves, their friends, their future partners, and even their future children. So what can we do to ensure we are raising thoughtful, compassionate, self-aware human beings? We have to become them ourselves. No one is perfect, but we can still all be better, and it starts with self-healing. Let's get to it. Welcome back to our uh, parent support lesson call thingamajig. <laughs> um, welcome, Melanie, and uh, let's talk about power struggles. Excellent. Thank you, my love. Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. And we are changing the format up a little bit. Um, rather than going live in the Facebook group, we are going to be pre-recording these lessons and we're going to go live for the support call at nine, uh, which the links are going to be provided in all sorts of places. Right, Elish? Yeah. If you are not in our Facebook group, Raising Enlightened Children, join the Facebook group. If you are not on our email list, uh, join the Facebook group and you will join our Facebook, our email list. Um, and, you know, we, not only are we in wealth of knowledge, but the parents inside our uh, Facebook group are also um, a wealth of knowledge and it takes a village to raise and enlighten children. So um, let's create our village. Yes, we are creating our village. So I would say let's even just join the village, yeah. right? Join the village that's already being created and yeah. uh, lots of incredible resources. And then one other way I would say would be just to email us directly at info at Raising Enlightened Children. And we will make sure that you get the uh, weekly support letter and the link. Um, and then just next week, we're going to do the topic today of, you know, how to avoid power struggles, how to minimize power struggles in our house and what houses and why. And then next week, uh, we are going live um, or we're not going live. We're going to be live in person. Oh my goodness. All of this lingo. Right. Um, we'll be live in person at uh, St. Martin of Tours School in, in Brentwood in Los Angeles um at 9 a.m and it's from 9 to 10 30 a.m and that is open to the public it's being hosted by the school so if anyone wants to join us live for this topic because today we're only going to be able to cover it for about 10 minutes but next week we're going to do a deep dive and really open it up and look at multiple different tools that we can use yeah. to avoid power struggles and it's so timely um and we can thank my beautiful child uh xander for being at the um developmental age <laughs> necessary to have this conversation but I think that we can have this conversation with just about any age with certain with uh, our children um but my son turned 12 and um he is uh very very aware of what's going on in his um in his mind and in his body which I'm truly grateful for um, and last night we had a bit of a power struggle with over homework. Um, and you know, he, he ended up, he was stayed, he, he stayed home from school yesterday cause he wasn't feeling well. And, um, with the promise that he would do his homework before he went to school today. 
and it was 8 30 his bedtime is nine o'clock and it was like I, did you finish your assignment it's time to do the assignment um and the there was several excuses as to why he couldn't finish the assignment um such as my pen my markers don't work um and i don't like using pencils and crayons and um i don't know where my markers are and i don't know where my homework is i don't know where the folders are just like <laughs> all of these reasons why he couldn't do his homework and later he said well i was in the middle of something and um and i've given him some some leeways some freedoms with like you know the the cat poop is his job and um if you don't want to do it at five that's okay but we're done with electronics until you do the cat poop and um and then I still end up having to remind him to do it <laughs> So I want to hear uh, what more do you need to know about what happened last night? Um, because at, when it was all said and done, uh, he said, you know, I feel like you guys control everything for me. And that is not my experience of his life or our relationship. And um, I validated his feelings and then also explained to him that that is not my experience of our relationship. <laughs> I'm curious if you asked him why he feels that way. I did not. Okay. Well, he said, because I'm, because I'm always telling him, like, I'm telling him what to do, when to do it. And he has so much that he has to do, like put his clothes away and the cat poop. So much to do. So much to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. not, not wash, dry, fold, and put away the laundry. Just put it away. And when you have a break on your game, can you put away your laundry? So, yeah, a lot of things are coming in. So as we said, there's lots of tools with regard to how to avoid the power struggle. And I'm going to pick one based on the example that you gave. And I am also going to say it is interesting, um, that perception of, well, you know, now he's 12 because I really felt that power struggle moment come in when, my, when one of my twins was six years old. So... Yeah, it it's really, not, it didn't just start at 12. It was, yeah. it's been for a while, but I didn't, it was very subtle <laughs> back then. And I wasn't as aware of it as I am now. I think what's happening now that he's 12 is he's very aware of the hormones that are happening because he keeps saying that um, now he hates me in those moments. And, um, and he's very aware that he's like, I don't want to become a teenager because I don't want to hate you. And mm. <laughs> he, like I said, he's so aware of, of what's going on inside his head and inside his body that it's, I mean, truly commendable. Cause I didn't know. <laughs> Okay, well, that is so sweet, and it's wanting it's wanting to take me down a different rabbit hole. <laughs> so gonna, pick a rabbit I'm hole. Gonna, I'm gonna put a pin in it, be, but before I do put a pin in it, um, again, I feel like I'm because because really the power struggles and these kinds of issues start from the minute our kids can start walking and talking, right? And mm -hmm. so. And what I'm saying is like, even for you, it wasn't that it's six years old was where I, where, where I realized it was happening. I realized it, you know, that the, that learning or needing to navigate this issue of control, literally, especially for my one twin, mm -hmm. um, because we all need power, just like we all need attention, mm -hmm. right? It's not unique to, it's not like we have power children or or attention children, but some of us are more 
inclined to need more attention and less power or vice versa, right? And for those kids that are more in that power seat role, especially if we are power people, can really lead to conflict. Um, and I would say like for Xander, actually this is more of a power moment that he's realizing, but he he's very easily soothed with a lot of attention. So he was like, if I would, if I would have put him in a box, he would be like, that would be larger in that box. And even those children, just like all of us, it's a human need, just like love. We need love and we need to be heard and we need to be understood. And that's what he's really, I think, asking for here. And I love that he is aware of his feelings. And I also don't want him to not want to go into his teenage years or into life because he's afraid of his feelings or afraid of feeling what he's feeling. So that's where I just wanted to address that. I mean, I'm not telling you that anything you don't already know, right, Alish, that, you know, to yeah. let him know that all feelings are welcome. Yeah. And what and he's expressed is that he's more afraid of the responsibility that comes with growing up too. Because he knows that as he gets older, that there's more going to, that we're going to, we're going to ask more of him. Um, mostly because I told him that. <laughs> and I think what, what would be very helpful. And so this is a, a, a way in which to really navigate this power play situation is to stop making decisions together. Okay. Right. And it would be going back to, so this is a power tool is the one when negotiating mm. and you know, there's, there's lots of other tools that you can, it's not like it's just one tool and you just use this one and you use it over and over and over again. It's like, if you want to build a house, you know, you need a hammer and you know, but you also need a screwdriver and you also need, I don't know, I'm not a carpenter so I'm not, or a, or a <laughs> contractor to know all the different tools that are, and a saw and I don't know, all the other things that were needed. But so this is just one of the tools, but using the tool of when we're negotiating inside of that power play um, situation that can come up with our kids, it's it's two statements, like what what I feel and what I want. And then really going back and forth on that, like what I feel is whatever it is I feel and what I want. Like I feel tired that I'm the one having to do all the laundry all the time. And I really want, what would really help is I want you to help me with the laundry. And then, you know, the response might be if it were, Xander in this situation well I feel really tired from you know doing my like having to do my homework and having to go to school and having to navigate I mean he may not articulate all of this right but what you can hear underneath it like I'm really tired from going to school what he's also telling you is he's navigating all the relationships at school having to move from class to class like all of the things that are underneath that statement right so yeah. but I'm feeling tired from from having to go to school and then you know, needing to come home and do my homework. And I want to be able to relax in the afternoon and not be doing laundry with you as well, like not add to my chores. So now you've each expressed what I want and what I feel, right? And then actually just have it rather than you imposing, I need you to put your clothes away, right? Which is really the underlying need of that is I want, I need connection. I want connection. I want support. So I don't feel tired really starting to have a conversation about that and saying, well, so what would work for you? Yeah. And so he would then be choosing some of the chores that he's doing and when and how, and the more that he is at choice in those decisions the less it's going to be about you imposing your will and you being the one in that power position. Yeah. Does that make sense? It really does. Um, and I, I, I remember ta us talking about win-win negotiation in a different context. Um, and I appreciate you represencing that. Um, and I, I thought I was doing it with the, no technology until after the cat poop was done, but that was still me telling instead of asking him um, what would work for him. Um, 
And the same with um, the five o'clock rule was also my rule. That was me with, you know, expressing to him when I wanted it done. Um, and uh, yeah, so I see where I'm imposing a lot of this is my rule. This is, and I see more where he feels like he doesn't have any power and any control over what he's doing. Um, I am remembering also with, we've had a lot of food struggles and uh, he doesn't like a lot of the food that we, we cook. And we came up together with the, the rule of if we make something, we, the adults make something that he doesn't like for dinner, that he has the, the option of making himself a li anything off the list of pre-approved foods, foods that are, you know, healthy and, um, and good for a growing body. Um, and so far he hasn't had to use that more than once, but I think that that really made him feel, um, feel heard and understood exactly and so what that does is it now diffuses that feeling of I'm just being controlled I have to do what somebody else wants me to do and then it it just the, it just flows into the ease of connection mm -hmm. and then he doesn't have to fight you and it's like oh I may as well eat this food because I could go make on yeah you know what I mean and it just sort of yeah, it'll be the same thing with the laundry or with homework or with and remembering that and doing that inside of the relationship is pivotal. Yeah, absolutely pivotal. So if you're listening to this, I just want to point out the amazingness that is Melanie in her parenting tools, because it's it just like I freaking love you and. <laughs> <laughs> and how you're helping me be a better parent well you know that I love you and I love Xander and I genuinely love all of the I mean we've had such rich discussions even inside of our support groups obviously with all the parents that we help but even inside of our support groups and and I think this just thinking about our support group that we had this morning that you know this the even this tool like this power tool of that recognition of you know just it's it's a dance mm -hmm. you know it's not like the strict and that's part of it is is knowing when to be flexible and knowing when to like lean in and lean out and doing this dance with our kids so that we keep that connection versus you know who's in control and who's the ruler so thank you so much for saying that Alish I love you and I'm just you know I I this is something I work on myself in my own parenting and you and I talk about it and just so appreciate you and so appreciate your willingness to to learn and try and for both of us to lean in and yeah so just again if this is something that resonates with you and you are in LA would love to see you next week where we will unpack a lot more tools that we can use with regard to avoiding the power struggles. Um, and hope and to this see is also the kind of stuff that we do in our parent support call on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern, no, Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> um, so if you're available 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesdays, um, please join us because we do this and so much more. Um, and yeah, absolutely. If you are in the LA area on the 13th of March, um, don't miss who's the boss. Uh, but I believe that's also at 9 a.m. Is that correct? I think so. Yes. yes. That one's going to be at 9, 9 to 10 30 a.m. next Wednesday. But like you said, the 9 a.m.s on Tuesday mornings have a really starting to gain a lot of there's a lot of really powerful and rich discussion in there. And I love that we're there and Deanna's joined us now as well, but the parents themselves, the stuff that the parents bring to the call is just so powerful. And it, it is that whole notion of a village. So I feel like we're repeating ourselves at this point, but it's good stuff. So it's worth repeating. Absolutely. So we'll be back next week with another le lesson and um, until we meet again, keep healing. Thank you for tuning in to Imperfect Mommying. 
It's time for us to step up and realize that our power is not in trying to shape our children. Our power lies in shaping ourselves into the people we want our children to model themselves after. Don't just do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. When you become a more self-aware, compassionate, and confident person, you and everyone around you benefit. For more information about me and my work, visit alishalyons.com. That's A-L-Y-S-I-A-L-Y-O-N-S.com. See you next time.